Hey there friends, it's Missy again. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm here for Shimmers Paints and I'm going to be showing you a brand new layout that I'm going to be making with the brand new Missy Color Kit, the April edition. And it is so pretty. Here's a quick look at the colors, the cut file, and the exclusive dots that are included in the kit. And I'm going to show you here up close all of the goodies. So the first thing is these beautiful dots and these are exclusive. You can only get these in the April kit. There are six of these beautiful springtime colored butterfly epoxy dots. They make the perfect embellishment and to coordinate with those butterflies, Paige Evans made us this beautiful butterfly cut file and I went ahead and cut it on some white cardstock. And then the four colors, I absolutely love this blue. Seriously, this is my most favorite blue of all time. I use it so much on all my projects. It's Vibes Jenny B Blue. This yellow color is a Shimmers original uh, formula and it's called Bumbly Bee. The green color is an Inklings and it's called Honey Do List. And it is the perfect springy light green color. And it's gonna go really, really pretty with these other colors. And then we get a pink one, which is Creamies, and it's called One Hot Mama. And I just about want to say this is the most perfect pink color. Yeah, I just love these colors. So, and they're going to look really pretty together, mix and matched with those dots. Okay, so I'm going to use white cardstock. I'm going to just start everything white and build from there. Uh, I did want to back some of these butterflies. Now, I'm not going to back all of these, but there's just so many of them. I thought it would look pretty to kind of mix and match a little bit of pattern paper in with all those colors. So I pulled out a couple of 6x6 paper pads. This one is from the new Heidi Swap Color Fresh collection. And I just pulled out a couple of papers that I thought matched the paints and matched the butterflies and would look pretty kind of scattered around the page with those butterflies because the cut file is pretty big and it's going to take up almost the entire paper. So um, I want to have lots of those main four colors kind of spread around. I pulled out this blue sheet and the six by eight paper pad from Vicki Booten's new collection, Color Kaleidoscope, but I'm going to go ahead and start backing with these papers that I've gotten here from Heidi Swap. I love that watercolor paper. I think it is beautiful. And so I'm going to just use a couple of pieces of that to trace the butterfly onto and then just simply glue it behind the shape. This is such a fun and easy technique to do. Uh, you get lots of color and patterns when you do the, the cut file backing technique. Um, there's lots of different ways you can do it. You can do what I'm doing here and just trace it and then fussy cut it out. Or you could just glue it directly to the paper and then fussy cut around the image. It just depends. I do both ways. Um, sometimes you can just eyeball it if it's a simple shape. But these butterflies are such different shapes and sizes. I just thought I would trace it. So I did use some of that Vicky Booten paper. And then I also pulled out the new Horizon 6x8 paper pad from Paige Evans and use some green. So now I've got all the four colors. I think I'm going to use this black and white picture of Paige, my daughter Paige, and uh, I'm going to wind up changing that later, but for all intents and purposes right now, I'm going to use that black and white picture because my first thought was whenever I make a layout from scratch and I've got all these colors, I sometimes am hesitant to use a color photo because I feel like it's going to compete with all the colors that I'm using. And so I tend to gravitate toward black and white because that just takes out some of the guesswork and having to mix and match photos to paint colors. But let's just go with the black and white picture for now and then we'll see what happens as we go. Now I'm gonna use some of my favorite techniques here. I love the packaging technique. I did coat my cardstock with clear gesso and let that dry because I definitely want my colors to be able to run and blend and sort of spread around the page before it dries. And without the gesso, it just kind of soaks right through onto the paper and you can't smudge it and blend it very well. And uh, with this, you can kind of see how the paint stays wet a lot longer and you can move it around. If I wanted to dab it up a little bit, it would be a lot easier to do that. So a little bit about these colors. Okay, now all four of these are different styles of shimmers. Um, not all of Shimmer's paints have shimmer in them, but all four of these do. 
Now, the Vibes, the blue color, it's got a shimmery finish, but I found that when I add a lot of water to it, sometimes that takes away a little bit of the shimmer. Now, I don't necessarily have to have shimmer on every single thing, so that doesn't bother me if some of the water dilutes the, the shimmer factor, but uh, it does do that. So if you do want something super shimmery, you may not want to dilute it with water. The green one is an Inklings, and it is very shimmery, and whenever this is dry, I'm going to hold it up and show it to you, and you'll be able to see the differences in what I'm talking about. The yellow one here, which is the original Shimmers formula, now that comes already uh, wet. It comes, it's already ready to be mixed up. You don't have to add water to that. That one is extra shimmery. It's almost like little chunks of glitter are blended up in there, and you'll definitely be able to see what I'm talking about here in a minute. Um, and then the pink one, which I'm going to use here shortly, it's a creamies, and it has more of a satiny finish, so I wouldn't necessarily call it shimmery. It's just more of a a shiny gleam when you tilt it in the light. But again, it's going to change if you dilute it a lot with water. And so it just depends on if you uh, want the shimmer or if you don't really care about the shimmer. Sometimes I just want the color. I'm not necessarily concerned with if it's super shimmery or not. But um, all I'm doing here, I'm using the packaging, I'm using some um, of my brush here, spritzing some water. I just want all this pretty color behind the cut file. Here's the pink I was talking about. It's very bold. I love it. It's so pretty. I want some pink at the top and the bottom. And again, I'm adding, I'm adding water to it, so it's going to dilute it a little bit. And, uh, you know, if you wanted to make it darker, you can just add more on top of it. Um, I found that if I dab it up with a paper towel right away, it lightens it up pretty fast. If you let it just dry naturally, it's going to look a little bit darker. So you just have to play with it. You know, um, I always suggest just getting out some scrap watercolor paper, some scrap cardstock, and just playing around with these paints and really get to know them and know how they look, you know, when they dry versus when you, uh, you know, use your heat tool or let them air dry. They're, they all have different effects, and you can get different looks with just one color based on how you treat it, if that makes sense. You can see here how when I use the splatters just straight from the container, it's a lot darker versus when I use the packaging technique with more water. And so I instantly get different shading based on that. So I know this looks like a hot mess here. It looks kind of like a an oval Easter egg sort of shape, but that's the shape of my cut file, and I kind of wanted you to be able to see what I was talking about here. Um, some color peeking through some of the butterflies, and I realized at this point that I had covered up, my photo was going to cover up a lot of the blue area, so I decided to add a little bit more of the blue up in that upper right hand area, because I didn't want all the blue covered up, because that is my favorite color of all time, and yeah, you've probably seen me use Ginny B Blue thousands of times because it is my favorite. So I'm really liking how this is looking and um, you can kind of tell here that the bulk of the layout is already done because that cut file takes up so much space. Okay, here everything's dry. You can see what I'm talking about. You see how shimmery that yellow is? That's the original Shimmers paint. The green is the Inklings and it's definitely got a shimmer to it. And then you can see what I'm talking about with the blue and the pink, they still have shimmer. It's just definitely not as strong because I did water it down. And so, you know, each paint may look similar, but they do all have a different finish. So here's where I decided to change my mind. I went through my pull photos and I thought, I don't really need to use this black and white picture. It's I didn't like, it was too big. And then the way I overlapped the butterfly onto the, the picture, it covered up her hand. And I just, I didn't want to cover up anything like that on the photo. So I went through and I found this pool photo and I thought this matches perfectly. I've got all this blue in the pool, in the pool water. And then she's got on a, a pink bathing suit. And I just liked the way it looked. Now I added a bunch of adhesive foam behind the cut file there. And the background is pretty much done. And you can tell that I don't really need a lot of embellishments. So those dots are going to come in handy because I'm not going to wind up using all six of them. Um, and the butterflies, you know, they're, the layout is plenty busy right now. I don't need a big title. I don't need a lot of other things. Now, I did want to use some of the butterflies that came out of the cut file. This is one of those cut files where you get not only the outline of the butterflies, but you also get the little insides that come out 
and they are easily colored like I'm doing here. I thought I would, I don't use all of these, but I thought I would color them just using the four colors and a paintbrush here. I didn't use any gesso or anything on these because uh, they're so small, but um, I'm just going to color these up really quickly. You can't really mess this part up. It's just adding some color, adding some water, letting it run and blend, and then I'm going to space a couple of these out on top of the photo. Because if you remember my picture, which you'll see here and again in just a second, that she is over to the right and there's a lot of open space on the left. And so I've got some room to add some stuff there on top of it. But uh, this was really fun. I could just color butterflies like this all day long and be perfectly happy with my life because these colors make me happy. Butterflies make me happy. And uh, yeah, these are just instant embellishments. Once you have the cut file done, you have all these spare butterflies. And I love that they're wonky shaped. They're not perfect because they're just different. See, here's what I'm talking about. I've got all this open space on the left of the photo. So I thought I could add in a couple of these butterflies that I just colored on top of it, just to sort of give it a little bit of something over there. Um, I'm not covering up her face. I'm not interfering with the important part of the photo. Um, I'm not going to use some of the big butterflies. I'm going to use mostly the smaller ones. I'm going to add a pink one up at the top, a green one over to the left and the right, and just kind of go from there. Since, you know, there's already so many butterflies going around, I thought a couple more couldn't hurt because they're small and they're subtle. Now here's where I'm going to add in my thread. You know I love me some tangled thread, and I felt like I needed a pop of yellow over to the left because I've got all that blue in the picture, and then I've got the bluish green butterfly, and then the pink butterfly, but I need some more yellow over there. So that's where the thread comes in. I added some darker pink thread underneath the cut file to the right of the photo, and then I'm going to very, very carefully, this took some time, to uh, glue this down. So I'm just going to kind of peel it up, add little dots of glue, to all those pieces of adhesive foam and glue that down. I wanted a little bit more texture up at this area here and so I just went with a tone on tone. I just um, tangled up some blue thread there. I colored in another yellow small butterfly because I needed some yellow up in that area. And then um, yeah I'm gonna add another little yellow butterfly right there. I'm gonna wind up changing that because I still need to add my epoxy dots. So this paper is from Paige Evans Horizon. I believe it's paper number four. Yeah, paper number four. And so I thought I would go small with the title. So I cut out the word today, and then I pulled out these multicolored small tiny alphas from Pink Fresh Studio. And I'm just going to go very simple and short with the title. It's going to be Today Was So Fun. And uh, I didn't want to do like a giant, big, thicker word. Um, because I didn't want to cover up any of the butterflies because it would just be too busy. So I thought a small title over to the right would be just fine. And this is another one of those layouts where even if you didn't have a title, it would still be okay. Um, but I like the way that looks. And then I used so much yellow and pink there, I colored in another blue butterfly because I needed a pop of that blue over there. And then I wanted a pop of a green thread. So I'm going to tuck that in right there just to give it a little bit of texture and some interest and some color variation. And here come the epoxy dots. I'm going to use three. I'm going to use the green one there on top of the picture. I moved that little yellow butterfly that I stuck down. And then the yellowish one over here and then a pink one up at the top. And then I'm going to save those other three for another project. But... Um, yeah, and that's all the embellishing I'm going to do. Um, like I said, the title's short and sweet and just compact over there to the side. And then I'm going to use my journaling or my uh, T-square ruler to draw some lines for my journaling. And I'm just going to add that right very, very carefully because I was writing over that gesso, which is kind of gritty. So just be careful when doing journaling on top of gesso. But anyway, I did add the date stamp and that is it. That's the final layout. I love how this turned out. I'm so excited about this month's kit. I hope you guys will want it. Uh, here's just a, a sample of what you can make with it. Uh, this cut file is so good. Uh, you could run it off the page. You could make it smaller. You could just use the inside butterflies and not even use the outside cut file part. But there's so many, so many options. And I hope that you will 
get this kit in your hands and make something pretty with it and let us know. Tag us in it on Instagram or Facebook and let us see. Um, I had a great time making this and I hope you enjoyed watching it. So make sure you check out shimmerspaints.com and uh, there are a couple of other kits as well this month. So make sure you check that, those out also and I will see you in my next video. Thank you so, so much for watching.